So let's take a look at the following example that basically deals with matching these four molecules to their corresponding proton NMR spectra. And let's begin with example one. So in example one, we have molecule A and molecule B. So molecule A contains three different types of H atoms. So all these H's are identical, but they are different from these H's and these H's are identical to one another and these are different from this H. So basically we have one type of H, we have a second type of H and a third type of H. Now on molecule B, we have only two different types of H's. So these H's correspond to one type of H and these H's correspond to a second type of H. So we see that molecule A contains three different H's, three different types of H's and that means there should be three different signals. This molecule contains two different types of H's so that implies there must be two different signals and that means we can readily match the second proton NMR spectrum to molecule B and the first proton NMR spectrum to molecule A simply because we know we should have three different signals corresponding to each type of H atom. Now, if we examine these H's, these H's have a great deal of electron density and that will act to basically shield these H's and that will place them all the way to the right upfield along the x-axis. So that means these nine H's correspond to the following signal which should be found all the way upfield. Now also the height or the the intensity of our peak or signal basically signifies the relative quantity of H atoms. And because this is smaller than this, that implies that these two H's must correspond to the slightly higher signal, while this signal must correspond to this signal here. So this is our single H, our nine H's, and the two H's. Now if we examine this, there's a similar structure here. We have nine H's and only three H's, so that means these correspond to the three H's, these correspond to the nine H. And once again, these have a great deal of electron density that basically shields all these H atoms. But here we have a smaller quantity of electron density and this electronegative atom basically takes away some of that density and so it shifts the chemical shift for these H's to the left along the x-axis. Now let's move on to example two. Now we have molecule C and molecule D. Now notice that we basically have this third butyl group but here we have a slightly different structure. So here we have CH2, here we have the carbonyl group, here we have the carbonyl and so it's slightly different. They're not exactly the same exact molecule. So we have to basically follow the same exact procedure as before. Four. First, we determine how many different types of H atoms are found in C and molecule D. So in molecule C, we have one, two, and three different types of H atoms, but here we only have one and two. And that means this must have two signals, this must have three signals. So because this has three signals, that implies this must be C and this must be D. Now the question is which one of these signals for molecule C corresponds to which one of our H atoms? So once again, the highest one corresponds to the H's that are found in greatest quantity and that means these are our nine H's. So this highest or most intense signal correspond to the nine H's. Now what about these two H's and these three H's? So once again the higher signal corresponds to the greater quantity. So that means these 
three H's correspond to this signal and the other two H's correspond to the smallest signal. And if we examine here, a similar thing can be said here. We have the greatest intensity P correspond to these nine H's and this P corresponds to these three H's. Now it makes sense that this is found farther to the right because there is a greater electron density than on these H's or around these H's and in fact this oxygen pulls away some of that electron density and that moves the peak even farther to the left. Now what about molecule C? So once again we have a lot of electron density on this third butyl group and so it's going to be farthest to the right.